We begin appropriately with the doing of New South Wales steam locomotives, the celebrated 38 class. The 38s, built from 1943 by Clyde Engineering in Sydney, boasted the highest boiler pressure of any locomotive in Australia at 245 pounds. These 200 ton Pacifics, having a tractive effort in excess of 36,000 pounds, handled the final top link steam passenger duties between Sydney and Newcastle, the Newcastle Flyer, and the Southern Highlands Express between Sydney and Mossvale, performing sterling work right up to the end in 1969. several 38s escaped the cutter's torch, the most famous being 3801, one of the first five to be built with air smooth casing. This addition, though aesthetically pleasing, did nothing to enhance the performance and in fact increased loco weight by more than six tonnes. A well-presented 38 prepares to leave Sydney with the Southern Highlands Express. The Southern Highlands Express is seen at a variety of locations between Sydney and Mossvale during the mid-1960s. A cold and bleak winter's morning sees 3807 leaving Goulburn with the Southern Highlands Express. A grimy looking 3807 leaves Newcastle with the return Newcastle Flyer. has been preserved and can still be seen on special workings.
The 30 class 464 tanks were built from 1903, initially from Bayer Peacock, with later batches from Everly workshops. They weighed 72 tonnes, with a tractive effort of a little over 19,000 pounds and provided much needed light motive power for Sydney's expanding suburban system of the time. With the introduction of suburban electrification in 1928, many of the tanks were converted to tender engines, designated 30T, adding a further 27 tonnes, and saw out their days to the very end of the steam era on light passenger and freight workings, as well as shunting duties. Number 3001 can be seen working in preservation at Thelmere Museum.
whilst number 3016 can be seen working on the Michelago Tourist Railway. A tank version is preserved and can be seen on occasional outings. The legendary Camden Tram on its route between Camden and Campbelltown with usual motive power 30 class tank. The 36 class were the predecessor of the 38s, built by Clyde Engineering and Everly Workshops from 1925. They had a very significant tractive effort approaching 34,000 pounds, weighed 160 tonnes, and with the bee's knees of the day, working the crack passenger expresses. It's noteworthy that more than a few drivers rated these 460s as better performers than the 38, and capable of speeds in excess of 160 kilometers per hour. The 3642 has been preserved and can still be seen on special working. The 36s were affectionately known as pigs, initially due to a number of teething troubles. However, the nickname stuck, 
and well suited their squat appearance. Thirty-one twenty-four and thirty-six fifty-two are seen in charge of a special out of Sydney. In common with other formerly prestigious engines, the 36s were finally relegated to more humble duties. A 35 class, 460s, known as nannies, or naughty nannies, due to their former NN classification, were built by Everly Workshops from 1914 as express passenger locomotives with a respectable tractive effort of a little over £29,000 and weighed 128 tonnes. A member of the class is seen on a passenger working during the mid-1960s. The standard goods types were variously known as D50, D53 and D55, as well as T, TF or K. Built from 1896 by a variety of builders including Bear Peacock, North British, Nielsen, Clyde Engineering, Everly Workshops and Dubs, earlier versions of the T-Series were improved on in a number of ways including superheated boilers. Having the distinction of being the most numerous class overall, the standard goods types in improved form had a tractive effort of over 33,000 pounds and weighed 125 tonnes. These remarkable engines lasted to the very end of steam, albeit on secondary duties.
number 5112 is presently under restoration by the Central West Railway Preservation Society at Orange. Standard goods types were utilised on special passenger duties, sometimes double-headed as seen here, just prior to withdrawal from regular service. Number 5367, the only one presently preserved in working order, can be seen today on the Lachlan Valley Railway. The 60 class garrets were also put to good use to the very end of steam. A typical Bayer Peacock product introduced in 1952, they could haul practically anything behind the drawbar. Weighing around 260 tonnes, they produced a tractive effort of 63,000 pounds. In their final gears, the remaining 60s were employed on passenger specials.
The 32 class, formerly classified P6, were regarded as one of the most successful 460s. With pleasingly proportioned appearance, construction began as long ago as the 1890s. Emerging from the shops of a number of builders, including Bayer Peacock, Baldwin and Clyde Engineering, they had a tractive effort of 26,000 pounds and weighed 105 tonnes. Thirty-twos were to be seen throughout the state on a variety of duties. A 32 returns light to Goulburn, caught by the evening light after the mail run to Cooma. Number 3246 had the distinction of hauling the last regular steam passenger service between Singleton and Newcastle in July 1971.
One of the lingering curiosities of the steam age is this 040 steam crane. Still in active service, seen fussing about the now extinct Honeysuckle Goods Yard, Newcastle, in 1969. One of the longest surviving types was the Z19060, built from 1877. Builders included Bayer Peacock, Robert Stevensons, and Henry Vale of Sydney. One of the final working examples, number 1948, can be seen at Darling Harbour during her twilight years. Whilst number 1957 works out her final years on coal stage duties, Broadmeadow Depot. With the tractive effort of 19,400 pounds and weighing 60 tonnes, they were reliable workhorses until the very end in 1972. Unfortunately, none are preserved in working order. The 59 class Mikados were supplied by Baldwin Locomotive Works, 1952, With a tractive effort of 35,000 pounds and weighing around 150 tonnes, they were generally popular with crews, providing reliable freight power until the mid-1960s. After this time, several remained in service, generally on shunting terms. Class leader 5901, well in her stride on a freight turn. Occasionally, they could be seen on passenger turns. An example in preservation, 5910, is seen on the Thirlmere Loop Line. The 12th class, 440, 
originally known as 79 class, were a typical Bayer Peacock design, also being built by Atlas and Dubs from 1877. Weighing 62 tonnes, with a tractive effort of a little over 13,000 pounds, in their heyday, handled top express passenger and mail trains. Number 1210, the only operational survivor, sat Plymouth and badly deteriorating outside Canberra Station. Fortunately, she was rescued and restored to full working order by the ARHS ACT Division. Number 1210 has the distinction of having hauled the very first passenger train into Canberra. The Z-17s, formerly known as H-373 class, were built by Vulcan Foundry in 1887. These handsome looking 440s, weighing 75 tonnes, with a tractive effort of almost 16,000 pounds, after initial teething problems were modified in a number of ways before proving to be most successful on express passenger duties. Number 1709 can now be seen in occasional use at Thirlmere Museum. The 27 class 260, built by Hunslet, England in 1913, weighed in at 80 tonnes. With a somewhat modest tractive effort of 18,000 pounds, a batch of eight was imported by the Public Works Department for railway construction work. They were also to work branch traffic and prove reliable engines. All were withdrawn by 1960. The one operating example, number 2705, can be seen in occasional use at Thirlmere Museum. Industrial operations were also an important part of the steam era. Private industrial coal haulage in the Newcastle region, namely Richmond Vale Railway and East Greeter Railway Company, were among the most extensive. The very last steam operations were to be found here in the form of the 10 class 282s.
They were essentially the tank version of the standard goods engine, built by Bayer Peacock from 1912 exclusively for industrial service, with a tractive effort of over 29,000 pounds and weighed 84 tonnes. Obvious similarity of design can be seen between the 10-class tank engine and the earlier version standard goods type, particularly below the running plate. Double heading could often be seen on the heaviest coal trains. East Greta was one of South Maitland Railway's main running sheds, servicing locos well into the 1980s. Today, the depot and the 10 class are preserved for posterity, though a sad reflection on days past. Before the Thames were finally retired, as late as 1987, a series of brake van passenger specials were laid on by the company. Several of the tens are preserved in active service. Number 18 can be seen hauling tourist trains on the Cockatoo Run between Port Kembla and Mossvale.
whilst number 24, in original condition, is seen on the Richmond Vale Railway. The depot at Pelomain was the home to a number of industrial types. Possibly the most popular and well-loved being the Robinson 280. Seen here on a passenger special towards the end of her working life. Originating from England's Great Central Railway in 1911, they weighed 123 tonnes and had a tractive effort of over 30,000 pounds. Kitson 2A2 tanks, ungainly looking machines were used by the Richmond Vale Railway. Built by Kitson and Company of Leeds in 1908, they weighed 90 tonnes and had a tractive effort somewhat lower than the 10 class of a little over 27,000 pounds. Commonwealth Portland Cement was another industrial concern using steam. In this case, Barclay 060 tank is seen with a rather unusual train load. These chunky looking 060 tanks weighed 41 tonnes and had a tractive effort of almost 19,000 pounds. One of these 1911 vintage tanks escaped the cutter's torch and can be seen on static display at Central West Railway Preservation Society Orange. Another former workhorse of Portland Cement is this 26-class Prairie Saddle Tank. In full working condition and operated by State Mine Railway and Museum at Lithgow.
Clyde Engineering's 040 cell tank, built in 1938, served Newcastle Steelworks before retirement. She can still be seen working in a second lease of life for the Richmond Vale Railway Museum, a stone's throw from her old industrial stomping ground. Though in this incarnation, hauling brake van trains for weekend passengers. The incursion of diesels eventually sounded the death knell for steam. A romantic era has passed, but a new breed of diesel lovers was born. Damp weather conditions seem to emphasize the end is very near for steam. No other product of man's mind has ever exercised such a compelling hold on the public's imagination as the steam locomotive. The steam locomotive is nearing world extinction and has already disappeared in the West. Soon much else will have followed it into fading memory. <laughs>